by the definition of Mawla was very clear. Allah subhanahu wa this was not the first time that the Holy Prophet has made, made this statement. In Da'at al Ashira, it was made clear who is going to be my helper, my supporter, my khalifa, my successor. And each time, all these persons keep quiet. And the only hand that is being raised is that of Imam Ali. And then when the third time Imam Ali does it, he declares that, yes, you will be my successor. You will be my khalifa. You will be my helper. And people laughed. And they told Abu Talib that your son has become your master. See, again... The whole concept was very clear that he was going to be what the Holy Prophet is. Mm. He was the closest to the Holy Prophet. He is the closest to the Holy Prophet. When you look at the whole incidence of Mubahila, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, call your anfusana, your nafs, in plural. Allah, and the Holy Prophet calls him as nafsul rasul. He was in every respect the closest in spirit in every quality to the holy prophet okay. he was the proxy to the holy prophet okay okay thank you very much uh, uh, I, I, um, fair enough uh, if we are to understand as you have very eloquently uh, explained to us this understanding of wilaya this so this mola is to be understood in no other way than master divine master if you like a, a successor of the Holy Prophet without any gap. Then my next question is, fine, we accept this, but how does that impact on our lives? Uh, what I'm trying to say is we have certain laws of Islam, we have certain doctrines that we follow, Islamic doctrines, beliefs. Does this concept of wilaya really impact or can't we just use it as an add-on? So we have an Islamic... Uh, structure, and then this is kind of an add-on that doesn't really have to affect everything else we do. Sure. That's a very important question. I think one has to refer to two ayahs of Quran Surah Ma'idah first as a start, where we'll say the first ayah is, Ya ayyuhar rasul, ballig ma unzil ilayka min rabbik, wa in lam taf'al fama ballagta risalatahu, wallahu ya'asimuka min nas Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O messenger, Ya rasul, this is the most formal address to the Holy Prophet. I mean, gone are, you know, ya muzzamil, you know, ya muddar. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, a very formal address. Oh, my Prophet. Oh, Prophet. Ya Rasul. Balik, deliver what has been revealed to you. Uh, and if you don't do it, you will not have delivered his message. In other words, his entire message would not have been delivered. The message that the Holy Prophet spent 22 years delivering, and this is the 23rd year now coming to say the 10 after Hijrah. You see, all this time he delivered that message that would not have been considered delivered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless you deliver this message. And after this message, which is Man kuntu mawla, fahada aliyun mawla, is delivered, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's another ayah, which is ayah number five, uh, ayah number three of Surah Maida. He says, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'amati wa raditu lakum al-islam adina. Today, I have perfected for you your religion and I have completed my favor on you and I have chosen for you Islam as a religion. In other words, the completion of Islam as a religion that is going to endure until the day of Qiyamah dependent, dependent on the wilaya, on this wilaya, this concept of wilaya, of a divine successorship to the Holy Prophet, a divine successorship that will endure after the Holy Prophet, will continue after the Holy Prophet. And we have to see it as a direct link with the concept of Imam Zamana, Ajalallahu Ta'ala Faraj Sharif, that this is a continuation of the same wilaya that took place in Ghadir Qum, that was declared in Ghadir Qum. This is a wilaya that was declared that Imam Ali is to be the implementer and the executor and the interpreter of what is right, what is wrong, what is Iman, what is Kufr after the Holy Prophet. And this was to continue all the way until the time when our 12th Imam, Imam Zamana Ajal Faraj Sharif, going to come from Qaybah 
and he's going to establish Allah's kingdom on earth. Inshallah. Um, I want to maybe focus a little bit on the characteristics of Imam Ali alayhi salam. But uh, just very quickly before I do, I mean, those are very strong words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, it, how can I say this? We have Islam today. We have the followers of the Ahl al-Bayt. But we also have many, many Muslims, alhamdulillah, who, and many of them, of course, you always have good and bad, but many of them who, who are not even followers of the Ahl al-Bayt are pious, dedicated, devoted Muslims. Yet, and of course, I'm not questioning Allah because it's in the Quran. But he says that him not saying this, him not announcing the wilayah of Imam Ali alayhi salam is as if you didn't do anything over the past 22 years as you said. How so? So the ayah makes it clear that the completion, the completion depends on this. It's the critical fulcrum. It's the axis on which the completion of Allah's religion depends. And the reason for this is, firstly, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not appointed a successor to the Holy Prophet and had left it for the people to decide, that would have been a very clear defect in the entire system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, had prescribed for, 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 for the people, for humanity, which is Islam. He designated, Allah designated each and every prophet. Allah appointed Hazrat Adam. And from that point onwards, all the way to the Holy Prophet, no one, no one, no people ever claimed the right to designate and appoint themselves a, a, a divine representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In terms of prophethood, there was therefore no logical or any other reason to suggest that Allah would not have continued his divine method of communicating guidance because Allah had, has promised that he will give us guidance if he had not given guidance in this very critical situation and mode then the ummah could have come and said that, look we did not get guidance we did not know who was the person to be the successor and there was a reason for that these our imams starting for Imam Ali al -Islam, all the way to our 12th Imam are the personalities, the divine guides who are to preserve Islam, who are to ensure that Islam is preserved all the way till the day of Qiyamah, to be protected from revisionism, to be protected from change and alteration, to be protected from erosion of values. Precinct Islam, as taught by the Holy Prophet, was to be preserved by this institution of Imama and Vilaya. And this was a very important part. In the same way as prophethood was a very important part of conveying guidance and hidayah to people, imamat and wilayah is a very important part of communicating that guidance to people, the continuation of that. So we have a very clear pattern. Sorry. You we have a very, very clear, clear pattern. pattern which starts with prophethood and continues with 11 Imams, ends up and then moves to the Ghaibah of our 12th Imam. And then we have the, during the Ghaibah, the guidance being given by the Mushtahideen, who are the representatives, the Aam, uh, Naibi Aam of uh, our 12th Imam. Okay, thank you very much for uh, your answers. Uh, and now we um, actually go to the phone lines because I believe we have a caller who wants to make a comment. Uh, welcome to the show. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Uh, this now uh, Imam said about, uh, I just want him to clear this point for me. He said that the Prophet, he went to, after uh, Hujjat al-Wada, uh, he went to Al-Ghadir place, very deserted area. And he said that uh, Imam Ali, he is my successor. So why the Prophet, he went, uh, is, what, did he go secretly, or why didn't he say uh, when he was on Hajj in al Kaaba among all these people, why did he go to deserted area, number one? Number two, um, we believe that these people who was with the Prophet, um, was it the, we believe that uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr, he went for Hajj as well, and other Sahaba went with him, and including Aisha. 
So no one said uh, in hadith or anything after the Prophet's death that the Prophet said, Imam Ali, he is the successor. Number three, which I want to say, let's assume Prophet Ali, he was a successor and came after uh, okay. the Prophet's death. Not a Prophet, but yes, yeah, sorry, uh, I'm sure yeah. that was a slip of the tongue. Yeah, let's, let's assume that, the, you know, uh, Hazrat Ali came after the, the Prophet's death. Uh, would Islam be as strong as, as, as after? Because we know Abu Bakr, when he came, Aradda and the people who are, the claim that they were prophets, there were so many. And Abu Bakr uh, declared war among every murtad, anybody who went back to Kufr. Mm. And uh, he did a lot of things, documented Al-Quran, and uh, established Al-Quran. Okay, and, so your, uh, your third question... Uh, he was would... busy. Second, Omar, after he came, he started open. He went to Spain, to China. He was, you know, he opened uh, the Iran, expansion, The expansion of the Islamic, the Islamic lands. So. so if Ali was the successor, would be the Islam like now all over the world? Okay. So in other words, if he had become the successor, maybe Islam wouldn't be as successful as it is today. So do, do, you, think that, do you think so? Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling in, sister. I'm going to pass it over now to Al-Hajj to respond to your three questions. The first one being, um, if it was a deserted area. I think you were talking about the actual... Um, yeah. geography of the landscape, yeah. but if it was a deserted area, why didn't he announce it? Okay, the, the question, I think uh, the, uh, the sister has asked important questions, and I think we thank her for these questions. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, you know, the question uh, is why didn't he announce it in Khane Kaaba, uh, as opposed to announcing it in Ghadir? Now, uh, in Khane Kaaba, as all people who go for Hajj, they know that, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, are congregated uh, at specific times uh, and then they are doing a tawaf at other times. And so it is, it is something that uh, uh, if, if, if the Holy Prophet wanted to make sure that everyone who has left Hajj, who came with for Hajj and who is now going back with him, back from Hajj to their respective places before the point where they actually separate In into directions. various different directions he actually stopped at this place and said all those who have gone ahead should be called back so he was seeking to ensure that these number of people, 100,000 people, according to some narrations, who are going to go in various different areas and localities in uh, the, the, the Islamic land at that time, they are, going to make, they are going to be the representatives and the forebearers of this news to them. So it was not a deserted place, really, in that sense. It was, uh, it was a desert. Uh, it was an area where there was hardly anything, and it was a, a midday. It was in the middle of the day. And it was a time when it was very, very hot. And, and, and many people who were there, they experienced the extreme uh, heat. And they sat there in the heat. It was supposed to be something that was going to be burnt into their memory because of the heat. The heat of the day. Everyone was being there, standing there. They are very anxious to know what the Holy Prophet is saying. Yeah, the Holy Prophet made speeches in Khane Kaaba as well. He made speeches explaining many things about religion. He explained many dictates of religion. But this was one important uh, statement and uh, command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that had to be made at a place which was highly uncomfortable for people but where everyone who had come with him was congregated. Can we imagine when the Holy Prophet is returning, which Muslim who loves the Holy Prophet would have stayed behind? After having heard from the Holy Prophet that, you know, this is uh, my last Hajj, which he also made a statement in, in the Khan Kaaba as well, everyone would have known that this is the last opportunity to be with the Holy Prophet. And everyone who loves the Prophet would have said, if the Holy Prophet leaves, we also go with him. We, we don't stay behind. Sure. And we don't remain here behind him. So clearly it was to get the maximum <clears throat> number of people. Now the second part of the question is... Uh, if Imam Ali salam had been accepted by the people as the designated uh, 